Disaster strikes a lone cosmonaut on a landmark Soviet mission. Volinov's descent capsule fails to separate on re-entry. It's engulfed in a 5,000 degree fireball. It's about to burn through and kill him. The recovery team is prepared to find a charred, unrecognizable corpse. The Russians aren't expecting to recover him alive, but there's no trace of him, nothing. How can he have simply vanished? January 1969. The United States is pulling ahead of the Soviets in the race to put the first man onto another world. It's a few months before the Apollo 11 mission leaves for the moon. The Soviets are not gonna make a moon landing in time, they know that, but they have other tricks up their sleeve. The Soviets announce a record-breaking mission of their own. The first ever docking of two manned craft in space. It's a historic event, and it's also important for the future of the space program in, in the Soviet Union, critically important. At 11.20 a.m. on January 15th, Soyuz 5, piloted by Commander Boris Volonov, docks with the orbiting Soyuz 4 capsule 135 miles above the Earth. 90 minutes later, Volonov's two crewmates spacewalk across to Soyuz 4, the first such transfer in history. The Soyuz 4 crew prepares to head home leaving Volonov and Soyuz 5 alone in the vast emptiness of space. The two cosmonauts return to Earth without any problems in Soyuz 4. A day later, Volonov prepares to return in Soyuz 5. That's when things start to go wrong. To safely re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, Volonov must uncouple the descent module from the service module he's been living in for the past three days. But when he fires the explosive bolts that should separate the modules, nothing happens. The service module doesn't disattach when it's supposed to, which means that Volonov's ship is entering the Earth backwards. Volonov plunges towards Earth at over 15,000 miles per hour with no heat shield. Re-entering nose first is certain death. The front end is not shielded against the heat of the re-entry. It will burn through. He'll burn to death, he'll die of a vacuum, all of which will kill him within the next minute or two. Soyuz 5 slams into the Earth's atmosphere. Fear grips the ground staff in Moscow. Mission control is helpless. They can't turn the Soyuz the right way around. They have to just wait and watch. As Soyuz 5 dives towards the ground, friction heats the exterior up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A superheated shroud of plasma begins to eat through the weak nose of the craft. The hatch seals are burning, and he hasn't got a spacesuit on, so he can feel the heat. Smoke fills the stricken capsule. He's now Utterly convinced he's about to die within seconds. Volonov writes what he thinks are his last words in his logbook. And then he takes that and he stuffs it behind his back to try and protect it. Hoping that if any part of the capsule reaches the ground intact, that logbook will be protected by his charred corpse. The ball of plasma surrounding Soyuz 5 blocks radio communications with mission control. Ground staff track Volonov's capsule as it travels over Russia. But just before 11 a.m. on January 18th, the craft disappears from radar. The capsule is 1,500 miles off course and going at almost full speed. It crashes into the Ural Mountains, one of the most bleak and remote parts of Russia. Volonov's colleagues sit in silence 
as they contemplate their friend enduring a grisly death. One of them takes off a cap and begins passing it down the row to collect funds for a funeral. Mission Control scrambles a team to recover Volonov's body. According to official Soviet records, several hours later, they find his charred capsule on a snowy mountainside in minus 40 degree temperatures. What they discover when they open the hatch shocks them. When they go to retrieve his body, they find the capsule completely intact, but empty. There's no trace of him, nothing. What's happened to Volinov on re-entry? How can he have simply vanished? When the rescue team explores the remote crash site, it spots traces of blood in the snow nearby. They begin to wonder if they've been beaten to the craft by wolves or bears. The team scours the area for human remains, but instead reports finding only a trail of human footprints. The tracks lead them to a peasant shack, and inside they are stunned to discover the doomed cosmonaut alive and only suffering from a few broken front teeth. Against gargantuan odds, not only did Volonov survive the calamitous re-entry of the craft without spacesuit protection or a functioning heat shield, he survived exposure to extreme G-forces and a near full speed impact with the ground. During the post-mission investigation, Volonov reveals the improbable sequence of events that saved him from what seemed like certain death as he fell to Earth. In these final seconds before the nose of the ship burns through, a miracle happens. The jammed latch of the trailing module breaks free. The capsule rights itself, and Volonov realizes that he may live to see the next minute. The last minute flip enabled Volonov to deploy the braking parachute. But his troubles weren't over. When his parachute is released, it tangles itself up. He rotates, twisting the parachute and shroud lines together, and then untwisting. It causes the parachute to partially collapse. Still breaks him, still slows him down, but not enough. On a regular descent, Volonov would turn to his braking rockets to slow his approach to five feet per second. But when he tried to fire them, they failed to ignite. Instead, Providence saved his life. And at the last minute, the next miracle shows up. He lands in deep snow, and that snow provides the margin of survival that he is not crushed and killed on his first microsecond back on Earth. Volonov's catastrophic reentry leaves him traumatized, but without serious injuries. Today, his mission is remembered as a tale of extraordinary bravery and sheer dumb luck. I think it is fair to say that he's the luckiest cosmonaut or astronaut in the history of space exploration. Mm -hmm.